Okay, moving right along to this next lecture within week two. This is skeletal muscle contraction and relaxation. So just at up to this point, you know, we've now have the the calcium bi bound to the troponin tropomyosin complex. That co tropomyosin has been taken off of the actin, and now those myosin binding sites, those active binding si binding sites, are now open and available for myosin to bind. <coughs> so we're going to see this sort of structure, this, this whole reaction occur. Okay, so <coughs> when you have release of the tropomyosin off of the actin, the myosin head is immediately going to bind onto the actin, uh, onto that actin to make sure that I word this appropriately with uh, the correct sentence structure. The myosin is going to bind to the actin on the active binding site, or the AKA the myosin binding site. When it binds, it's then going to pull the actin along. Okay, so it pulls the actin. Once it has pulled the actin, the myosin will not release until an ATP binds to the myosin head. The binding of ATP to the myosin head is what causes the release of the myosin off of the actin, okay? And if we remember, back in week one, we, we talked a little bit about the myosin structure, and the myosin head has an ATP ace built into it, meaning that it will break down the ATP. Okay, so that myosin hydrolyzes or breaks down the ATP, and energy from the ATP rotates the myosin head into the cocked position. So what this is referring to, let me pull up a good example, a good, um, another image of this. And we, I showed this picture before. It's like this. So when the ATP binds here, this is over here. Uh, this is where the myosin was before. <coughs> so the myosin binds onto the actin, pulls, and then ATP comes and will bind right here on the myosin head, and it releases it, and this actually causes the myosin, that energy that is released when it, the ATP is hydrolyzed, is going to actually kind of cock. So this myosin head kind of comes down and cocks and resets because it has energy. So it holds onto that energy and almost kind of in, in, in this sort of sense of this picture, you can almost look at it as like coming down and pulling up like this, creating tension there. And then it will bind again to the next actin, uh, the next binding site that is on the actin, and repeat that process over and over and over again. Okay? So once the ATP has been broken down and it's been recocked, it binds back onto the actin and you get the power stroke. The power stroke is that pulling where it pulls the actin along. You get a little head swivel, and then the myosin actually releases that phosphorus in that process. And then also the ADP, the myosin will release the ADP at the end of the power stroke, thus leaving it in this bound state again, just waiting for another ATP to come along and bind to it to allow it to release and perform that action again and again and again as that muscle contracts. So th this... This will get we'll get into this a little bit later on. Um, 
But this sort of contraction, what we're talking about here, is known as a concentric contraction. This means that the muscle is shortening. So it's contracting and the muscle is shortening. There are other types of muscle contraction. There's concentric, eccentric, and then we'll also have isotonic muscle contractions. This, what we're describing here, specifically with this power stroke being pulled like this, specifically is kind of referring to the concentric contraction. And if you also, also we, if we want, we can actually take a step back and really, there was a specific spot thing that was said, I think right here. Yeah, how the alc actin filament move towards, moves towards the M line. So if you remember that sarcomere, like that M line is where the myosin is, and that actin gets pulled towards the M line. And that's why when we look at here, that M line in this H zone, that's why this actin is getting pulled this way towards this M line, so our H zone is actually shrinking. A band stays the same, the H zone shrinks, and if both of these filaments are getting pulled each towards the M line, um, this whole thing, it's almost like this whole thing kind of squishes together. So it's like our myosin here are getting closer together, and so our I band also disappears. So our H zone is shrinking, as well as our I band is shrinking with a concentric contraction that we're, we're, we're looking at here. And I went ahead and explained pretty much all of this um, just from that first picture. And that's, that's our muscle contraction. Now our muscle relaxation, we t I talk, touched on this in the last video, where that sarcoplasmic um, CA, that calcium ATPase pump, that calcium pump, is going to push and pull all, kind of, we'll say pull, pull all of this calcium out of this space and put it back into the sarcoplasmic reticulum. So right here, this is our DHP receptor. This is our ryanodine, um, ryanodine channel right here. And all this is our calcium, so that using, using more ATP, we're pumping this calcium off, and the calcium is gonna be releasing from those troponin, tropomyosin complexes. <coughs> As that calcium is released, the tropomyosin is then gonna go, going to go back to covering the myosin binding sites, those active binding sites on the actin. covered each of those points. And there is a protein that's sitting in here that actually will help to hold all of this calcium. That is our calcequestrin. I butchered the spelling of that. Our calcequestrin right there. There's a reason I'm a science major and not a an English major. Spelling has never come easy to me. But yeah, <clears throat> and the calcium question is that protein inside the sarcoplasmic reticulum that holds on to the calcium. Um, so here we kind of see this whole process, the whole loop, um, everything as a whole, where we have the signal come down, the voltage-gated calcium channels are going to open, which causes the vesicles containing acetylcholine to exocytose, the acetylcholine comes and binds onto these ligand, acetylcholine ligand gated cation channels. Sodium rushes in, potassium comes out. The change, it goes from negative 90 millivolts to positive 75 millivolts, and this slowly spreads across until we reach voltage gated um, sodium and potassium channels. And again, these open and sodium rushes in, and this action potential spreads along the sarcolemma and then goes down into the T-tubule. As it continues to spread to the T-tubule, you, 
get next to the DHP receptor. The DHP receptor is attached to the ryanidine channel. The ryanidine, ryanidine calcium channel is a mechanical receptor. It opens. The calcium then will rush out. The calcium binds to troponin C. The troponin C is going to go and undergo a conformational change. So its shape is going to change, pulling the tropomyosin off of the active sites on the actin. The myosin heads are then going to bind to the actin and going to pull the actin along. Our H zone and our I zone are both going to shrink as this occurs as we get that power stroke. Um, once it pulls, the ADP is going to come off of the myosin head. And when new, fresh ATP binds to the myosin head, the myosin head will re release and reset its caulking phase. It resets. And then it will bind to the next um, myosin binding site on the actin and then power stroke again and pull and cause our contraction. Once the contraction is finished, our calcium ATPase pumps along the sarcoplasmic reticulum are going to pump this calcium out and away from our thin filament, away from the troponin, and back into the sarcoplasmic reticulum where it will be held by calcequestrin. So everything that we've talked about the past several videos, the past about 40-ish minutes worth of material, I just went through the entire thing. That's that whole process. It's really, really helpful to sit down and kind of write this out. I would, I personally, when I was taking this course, I printed something out like this that was um, not labeled at all. And I wrote down the process. I wrote down, like I labeled everything that was here and I wrote down what was occurring and what happened in what order and why kind of that was happening. Because if you can understand each of these individual pieces, eventually, and not necessarily only in this class, but in other, in future classes, we're going to run into pathology specifically a lot here in the neuromuscular junction. You're going to run into pathology that either prevents the acetylcholine from being released or prevents the acetylcholine from being taken back up and those sort of things. Uh, here, again, I, just, I went over all of this, each of the individual parts, and here's this whole thing again. It looks like this is just kind of repeating again couple of those slides. Um, one thing that I did fail to mention, and actually I want to go back and mention this, this whole process is going to continue to occur as long as we have acetylcholine here in the synaptic cleft, here in this cleft, in this neuromus inside of this neuromuscular junction. As long as acetylcholine has been re is released and there and present and binding, we are going to continue to have muscle contractions. This reaction is going to continue to occur. What if actually causes it to stop, you have an enzyme that's also in here that's called acetylcholinesterase. The job of acetylcholinesterase right here in the synaptic cleft is to take, is, is to either break down the, is, to, is, is to break down the acetylcholine here. And as it breaks down the acetylcholine, the parts of the acetylcholine are reabsorbed back into the axon terminal to then be reprocessed and turned back into more acetylcholine to be reused. Okay, so that is our enzyme acetylcholinesterase, is our enzyme here in this, in this area to prevent this reaction from just continuously occurring nonstop. Okay, this video was nice and nice and sweet. Um, this sh just about finishes up our um, week two lecture. We're going to have a little bit more kind of diving back into skeletal muscle and the different types of skeletal muscle as well as fatigue of skeletal muscle and how that kind of plays into those different muscle types. Okay, I will see you on the next video.